Sunday and Monday nights. I think it's five to seven, and I think it's the on. I think the room is Guestman six two sixty one, something like that. Okay, so you can go there for a help on the homeworks. All right, and then the te one of the graders had a comment about the presentation. <clears throat> Apparently, some of you turned in some pretty nasty looking stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, try to turn it in neatly so that it's easy to grade. All right, so today we're going to talk about MATLAB, the next um, topic, which is something called scripts and functions. So when I'm teaching you MATLAB, I'm trying to teach you not only how to use MATLAB, but more general things having to do with programming languages. We don't, in the curriculum, have a general programming class, you know, a credit entire class on programs. I'm just trying to give you some of the elements that, uh, within MATLAB, and this, this will be applicable to other things you might learn in the future, perhaps, like C or Java or things like this. They're all kind of the same in many ways. So today we'll talk about scripts and functions, and I will give you um, a chance at the last 20 minutes or 25 minutes to do a little exercise. Um, so scripts are the simplest kind of thing you can do in MATLAB besides type things at the command line. So let's say you, you have something you're doing. You might notice that you're typing the same thing over and over at the command line or hitting the buttons in return. So you can put all this stuff in something called a script and just run that. It'll run a series of commands in succession so you don't have to enter them one by one. It's useful if you're going to do it over and over again. Okay, like this. And you create one of these. Well, I'll show you in a minute, okay? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's what I got in trouble for last semester, doing stuff like this, but... Um, they're called .m files, okay? So if you see something with a .m, it means it's a MATLAB script or function, okay? A .mat, you might recall, is something that we save. Like, you know, if you save the workspace, that's called a mat file. An m file is something you create it's either a script or a function. I'll show you how to create one in a second. Once you create it, so you, cr you go in here and you cr create, open a, an editor. You, give it a, you type in your commands. You call it some name. File name means the name, whatever name you want to call it. And then when you get back to the command line, as I'll show you, just type this file name. and It'll execute whatever commands you put in that file. Okay? So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Well, I'll show you how to do it now, okay? So first of all, here's what I'm talking about. You are in here in MATLAB. I don't want that. So if you want to create a new script, you come in here and say a new, yeah, script or function or these, these other things you don't, we're not using right now. So if you want to create a new script, you do that. It opens up a window. And then in this window, you type stuff. Whoops. <laughs> If you know how to type, right? Whatever. Okay. I'll, I'm just going to show you an example of one I created. When you're done typing, you, not surprisingly, um, save as, and you see it wants to give it the .m extension there. So you type in the name, it's going to give it the extension .m. It'll know it's a MATLAB script or, or function. Okay? All right. So let's say that. You remember this problem, right? This is where we wanted to compute solutions. We already knew the solution, but we wanted to compute values matching sets of t and x and plot them for different values of r and maybe different initial conditions x naught. This is that logistic equation for population growth that we dealt with. And so you might have in the past entered commands like this one by one at the command line. You know what the command line is, right? That's this. In the MATLAB window, you type commands, hit return. Okay, so you might get tired of doing this because you're just doing the same thing over and over again. So for example, um, in this case, I'm going to create a file, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm, I call it logistic underscore script because I have another thing, a logistic function, I didn't, and I give it a new name. And I'll open, show you what this looks like. Just consists of these commands in a file. Okay. So the first command specifies what you want the initial population to be, the initial density here, the x naught. Um, gives it the growth rate, r, defines this vector t, computes the solution x at, for every one of these values, t, one by one, and then plots t versus x. And if I wanted to, I could also label, label the plots and everything else like this. Okay. 
So if I'm correct, I have done this and I saved it. So over here, I just went over there, double clicked on it, it opened this thing up. Okay, obviously I've already done this. If you hadn't done this, you'd open it up like I did. You would type in the commands like this that you want to run and you would save it under some name, okay? So specify initial um, value for x naught, right? That's what it is at time equals zero and you want to compute what it is in the future, x of t. Specify the growth rate r, define the time vector you want to use, zero up to 10 in increments of 0.1. Calculate the value of x, which will be 101 values of x, and then plot it, okay? All right, so let's say we've created this thing, which we have. You, this is in the slides, by the way. You, so if you want to create this, you can, all right? But I'm going to give you one to create at the end. It'll be, it'll be a lot more exciting, you'll see. All right, so now if we want to run this thing, I assume, so you just type that command, logistic underscore script, and it solves the problem, plots the answer. Okay, it just beats typing them at the command line. Assuming you want to do it over and over again. If you only want to do it once, then you can just type it at the command line. Okay. So that thing's called a script. It's just a file that contains a series of MATLAB commands, nothing more. Just makes life a little bit easy. It's not really a great innovation. Okay. So again, that's what, the f that's what the file contained, those series of commands, just copied them, pasted them from the file, looks just like that. And then you run it, well, I won't even give you the history here. <laughs> just, I'll I'm gonna reload these slides anyway, okay? So y if you just write, you just issue this one command and it generated that plot right there, okay? Now sometimes it's, um, you would rather not, let's say for example you want a different value of r, okay? So the, the pr I think the previous value was 0.5, and now you want to solve the same problem, but maybe you want a different value of x naught and a different value of r. So if you want to do that, one option is to open that file, logistic.script, change these two numbers, save it, rerun it, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's a little bit cumbersome though. So a better way to do it might be the following. You simply have this one command, okay? So what I'm gonna do is things that I think are gonna change, I change in the workspace and I only put in the script things that don't change. So for example, if I think I might change the X naught and the R and the T, I'm gonna go ahead and do that at the command line and then I'm gonna issue, <laughs> this thing used to be called logistic until I created another file called Logistic and then I had to rechange its, it had to change its name, sorry. Okay, all right. So what I'm saying here is rather than go into the file and manually change these numbers, I could enter them at the command line and then I could run this file. Well, now this thing just has that single command, you see. It just beats, it's easy for me to type this in the, in the command line than to go open up the file, change it, save it, just less work, okay. It does the same thing, it's just a question of what's most convenient. So usually in the script, you're gonna put things in there that you don't change, and at the command line, you can enter other things. So obviously, if I were to make my logistic <coughs> script just have the single command instead of the commands, all these commands, so just this command, for example, well, also the plot command, um, I have to do these things first, right? So if I don't do this, it's gonna give me an error. You get what I'm saying? So, I'll show you, just for kicks. So let's say this file ends up, I'm gonna change it to be just that, okay? Now it just computes X and it plots, and now, I'm gonna clear my workspace. Okay, let's say I enter this command. It says, what's X not? Never heard of it. <laughs> So in other words, if you do this, you have to enter the stuff at the command line to begin with, right? X naught, hope I have a value, yay. Um, what's the other thing I need? R, yay. I need a T. See, now I've entered all the information, now I can run it, it'll work. It didn't plot it though, did I delete the plot command or what? Oh, 
There's the plot. OK. So in other words, you can enter information in the file, or you can enter at the command line and then run the file. You just have to make sure that, that all the information that the script needs is in the workspace when you run it. Otherwise, it'll give you an error like, I don't know what you're talking about, x0. Okay? OK, so this is a convenience thing. It's not a major innovation, to be honest. Um, Okay, so we just did this. All right, so what's much more powerful is something called a function. Okay, the, the difference between a script and a function is the function has inputs that you provide, and then it has outputs that you um, compute. Okay, so it's kind of like a script, except it's, it's, it's <laughs> kind of like a script, except it's different. Um, and it provides you a lot more flexibility. Okay, so it accepts input arguments, it produces outputs. It's also called a .m file. So if whether something is a script or a function depends on what's in the file. They're both called .m files. Um, it's, it's much more flexible and extensible means you can do a lot more things with it than you can do with just a script. You create it using the same thing I did, file new, but now you choose function instead of script, although I don't really think it matters because it thinks they're both .m files. You save this under the name, whatever name you want, file name .m, and then you execute it by issuing this at, <coughs> sorry, at the command line. But you also, as I'm about to explain, you have to provide the inputs as arguments. So this idea of a function is pervasive in all programming. Every programming language has extensive use of functions. Okay, MATLAB, C++, Java, whatever, Fortran, if you ever heard of that. Um, doesn't make any difference. They all use functions. So function in MATLAB. So when someone says syntax, what they mean is in the particular language you're working, it wants you to write a function a certain way. That's called the syntax. Okay? So the <laughs> syntax in MATLAB looks like this. Okay? So if you create an M file that's a function, the first line of the, fun the file has to look something like this. Okay? So first thing has to be function. That lets MATLAB know you. I'm about to execute a function, not a script. Okay. Then my fun means whatever you want to call that function. <laughs> like quadratic, we're going to call one in a second. These are input arguments. In other words, this is information that the function needs to compute the outputs that you want. Okay. At the end, I'm going to have you do an exercise <coughs> where the goal is to solve the quadratic equation, create a function that solves the quadratic equation. So Obviously, if you want to solve the quadratic equation, you need to know the coefficients of the quadratic equation. Those are the inputs, and the roots are the outputs. So that, you know, that's what I mean by a function. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I got that. Dot m file, uh-huh. Right. And usually, I find this isn't actually true, but normally you want the file name to be the same as this thing. So if you call this thing quadratic, then you want the file name to be ca called quadratic.m, although it doesn't really necessary. But it's, sure, it's cleaner, okay, that way. Um, this tells you what you can use as names. And the thing that in, when you start writing advanced programs, which I don't know if you guys will, but the, uh, the value of a function is you can modularize your code. So when you're trying to develop a big program, it's not a good idea to have just one piece of continuous huge code, right? Because usually in a particular program, you'll have something you can either divide up into a certain subtasks, or a certain subtask has to be executed many times. And then you can modularize the code by having functions that do certain things. Okay? It just makes it cleaner and neater. Okay? So you can have a program in MATLAB that calls a function, that calls another function, that calls another function. They can be embedded within each other, nested. Okay, we aren't going to get to that level probably in this class, but it provides near infinite flexibility. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so when we solved this logistic equation, we didn't like, at least I didn't like it, because you had two choices. If you, for example, if you want to change the value of r, what could you do? Well, you could write a script where you defined r in the script, and you could open the script up and change r and save it and run it. That was one option. The other option is you could, you could r uh, change R at the command line, and then you could run the script, right? Um, so what a function does, well, I'm going to show it to you in a minute. So this function would look something like this, okay? 
So this is what the file, this is all the file contains. I'll open it up in a minute. I've already written it. So I am defining a function. So the first line of this file says function. Okay. I'll explain this in a minute. So I'm going to call the function logistic and I'm going to save it in a file called logistic.m. That's why I got in trouble because anyway. And then I'm going to provide to this everything I need to compute the solution of this equation, t. Right, that's the vector of time points. I want to compute the solution. The rate, r, the initial value, x naught. And then it's going to spit back to me a vector x, which is the solutions of x at all those values, t. You get the idea? And um, then when I want to run this guy, I can do something like this. Okay, so the file just contains this declaration, defining the function, name, input arguments, output. And then it just has a single command. Okay, this command takes all the information you provide. It creates the vector x, which you return. Okay, when I say return, after you run this function, you, you, this x is going to be available in the workspace. That's what I mean by output of the function. You might calculate many, many things in the function, but the only things that are outputs will be remaining after you're done. You see, if I had a lot of intermediate calculations, none of those will appear in the workspace because they're not outputs of the function. Only outputs of the function are available later to use. Okay? So what am I doing in this? How do I use this function I'm about to show you? Well, these are the input arguments, so I have to define those. So let's just go ahead and do it. It's more illustrative, I think. So when I have slides like this, all I've done is run the thing in MATLAB and cut and pasted the stuff into PowerPoint. Okay, so there's nothing different between what's in the slide and what I'm about to do. Although I'll probably make errors in what I'm about to do. So just to make sure there's no confusion, I'll clear the workspace. I've created this file. It's right here. Click on it. It looks like that. Just like I showed you. Okay. It has a declaration. There are the inputs. Okay, the time vector, the value of r, the value of x naught, both r and x naughts are scalar, t is a vector. And then this is the name of the function, and I'm going to return something called x. So in this function, I better compute something called x, <laughs> because MATLAB expects me to do so. And this is so simple, it's just a single equation. Okay? If you had more complex functions, there might be hundreds of different you know, commands and, and, and calculations being done, but in this case, really simple. So that's what it looks like. Can't get much simpler than that. And then to run this thing, you need to define all the things that it needs. It needs a t vector, which I'll do there. It needs a value of x naught, which I'll take to be that. It needs a value of r, which I'll choose to be this. Um, I've got lots of x. Oh, well. Try this one. I, I just don't There we go. <laughs> I never type if I can avoid it. All right. So then I, I issue the command like this. Okay. So let me hit return. Whoops. Oh, God. I hit the arrow. I'm sorry. Let me try again. Okay. So what I've done here is defined all the inputs of this function, right? I defined x naught and r and ignore that. That wasn't supposed to be there. So to find t, x naught, r, those are all the inputs that this function needs. And then when I run this function by typing this, okay, it's going to give me back the answer in something called x. I could call this whatever I want, but I call it x because I want to. Okay. And you see it's created a vector x now somewhere up here, and it's the same dimension as, the, as t. And so this is flexible now because I can change these values in the workspace here and then re re run the function. Um, and you know, for, for something this simple, there's not a big difference between a script and a function, but normally they're, they're <laughs> you'd rather use functions wherever possible. You can also enter, if you want to, you can enter these values. I tend not to do so, but you can enter them right in the function itself. It doesn't matter. You don't, you know, you don't have to define a variable and then put it as, you can put numbers in there if you want. So if I really wanted to, I could, whoops, make this be 0.1 and that to be 0 0.5. Is that right? Is that what I had? And then I could, I 
think that's the same. Oops. Good catch. No. There. That should work. Okay. And then you know you can use the use do the usual. Ah. Surely you just. Oh. That's weird. Oh no, it's not. Well, see the problem is I didn't have the right t vector up here. You can see it's kind of stupid to enter the t, the t like this because, okay, let's say you compute the answer, now you have x. You still want to plot x versus t. <laughs> so you might as well define t outside the function. So it'll work now. And it looks like this. Well, sorry, something else. Okay, so, so the value of the idea of a function is that you can write something very general and now I can compute the solution of the logistic equation for any initial condition, any value of r, and any times I want. Okay? And it beats, you know, scrolling through all these commands at the command line. So this is a very simple example, and you'll get a chance to do one yourself in just a second. Okay, so that's just repeating what I already did, right? Define the time vector. Yeah, time vector r, x naught, see, and so now you can quickly change any, anything you want. If you want to see what this function looks like for a different value of r, you can quickly change it, rerun it, okay? So that's what's shown in this little example here. So what I'm doing here is I want to compute, you might, you did this for one of the first pr exercises you had. I want to compute the solution of the logistic equation for three values of r, okay? So I'm going to create a time vector, right? 101 points between 0 and 10. Here's my initial value of x. I'm going to run this for three values of r. And for each value of r, I'm going to call it x1. And so I just keep rerunning this function, and I change the input argument to be r1, r2, and r3. So it doesn't care what you call these things. It just cares the order they're in. You can call this thing Fred, Tony, and Bob if you want, if they're the right dimension. It won't care, OK? So it doesn't, it doesn't, there's no relationship between what I call it here and what I call it here. I mean, there is in terms they're matched up, but the names don't have to be the same. You can call this thing R and you can call this one R1. They just have the dimensions have to work out, okay? So what I'm doing here is finding three values of R and then I'm running the function three times to get three values, um, three vectors, X1, X2, and X3. And then I'm plotting them and labeling to get this. I mean, I can do it if you want. Not, not so exciting. But this gives you some idea. You remember when, we, when you did the first homework assignment depending, or exercise th where we did this, you might have done this in different ways, but you might have even gone and done the worst thing of all, and that's plug the actual values into this equation, right? Plug in the value r equal 0.1 or something, and then the next time you want to run it, you go back and change it to 0.25. <coughs> so... That becomes very cumbersome because this is a trivial example, right? But in many codes, this value r might be used 20 times in the function, 20 different times. And so this, keeps tra this is a nice way to keep track of it. You change it one time as an input, and then it'll change everywhere else it's used in the function. Okay? If you try to do it manually, you'll make lots and lots of mistakes. Okay? So do you guys want me to do this example or, do you, or not? Not, it's not very challenging. <laughs> In fact, watch how unchallenging it is. <laughs> oh, come on. That thing's in the way. I guess I'll have to create the legend by hand. All right, I'll be, I'll be nice. Okay, I'll clear the workspace again. So first thing, create T vector. There it is. Um, cr create a value of X naught. That looks good. Cr create a value R1. Is that what I used before? Yeah, okay. Create a value R2. Create a value R3. I'm a really quick typer. Um, Compute a vector X1. So I had this. 
Okay, so there's my function. So I'll just call this x1 and that r1 and run it. It'll create a vector x1. You see it up there now. I'm not much for typing, so I'll change that to x2 and this to r2. And I'll change this, whoops, 3. Okay, so now I've created the vectors r1, I mean, sorry, x1, x2, and x3 that are associated with r1, r2, and r3. And now I'll plot. I'm lazy. I want to see if this already exists. It does. Okay. And so there you go. That's the plot of all three lines. Um, hopefully you know that you always want to label. So x label. Oh, sorry. See why I don't type. We don't really have units. Obviously, for this problem, if you had real units, you'd put them in there. But this is a non-dimensionalized model, so you don't really have units. Y label is, I don't know. We just call it x. And then you can create a legend. So you can keep track of the lines. First ones we called uh, was for R1 and uh, this is really tiring. All right, what? All right, so this is just exercise and plotting. It's not exciting. One thing I thought you might, so if you look at this picture here, there's a couple things you probably don't know that you can do because I never taught you this. But first of all, if you ever create a legend, you can move it around arbitrarily. That's nice. If you ever want to look at a particular, you see this thing here with a little plus-like sign there? Data cursor, it's called. This, you can grab any point off of the graph you want. So if you want to know, sometimes you might have a function like has a maximum. You want to know where the maximum is. You take this little pointer. You can point any point there. It tells you what the value of x is and the value of y at that particular point. It beats like going like this. Right. <laughs> okay, it's very, very precise. If you'd like to make the thing larger, you can use see this magnifying glass I just got. You can hone in on any part of the graph you want, like that. Okay, so those kind of convenient ways to look at the graph. All right, so without further ado, as they say, here is your challenge. Okay, I gave you a simple challenge, it's not hard. So. Quadratic equation, everyone knows it, looks something like this, at least the way I write it. You've got quadratic equation in x, you have constant coefficients a, b, and c, and you know the solution looks like this, right? Everyone knows this. <laughs> so there's two roots because it's quadratic, and so what I want you to do is write a function that computes the solution of this equation and then use the equation to, s to find the roots of these three quadratic equations. So if we think about how the function has to look, I mean, so what does a function have? Function has inputs, function has outputs, right? So what do the inputs of this function have to be? Well, they have to be the coefficients of this quadratic, right? That completely defines a quadratic. You need a, b, and c from that equation. Can't calculate the roots of that equation if you don't know a, b, and c. So th that's the input, a, b, and c, okay? And the output is the two roots, right? So I can give you, and then you want to test it on this example. I picked these strategically, but I, I don't know what my strategy was. <laughs> um, like one of them had complex roots, one had real. Maybe one had repeated roots, I don't remember. So this will give you a hint, okay? So clearly I've created something called, this is how I'm going to use my function. My function's already done, okay? It's called quadratic, okay? It takes in something called coefficient or whatever you want to call it, but the point is it's the coefficients of the polynomial. That's the term multiplying x squared, that's the term multiplying x, and that's the constant term. You know, a, b, c in the equation I just gave you. And then it gives you back x. It's a vector with the two roots, okay? So what you're to do is create that function, and then when you run it for these different cases, you should get these answers if it's correct. So that's, so if you need help or something, I will help you. But there's nothing like doing, as they say. So I suggest you start by opening a file, right? Opening a new file. Uh, 
function and making the first thing that look like this. Function. This is probably helping you too much. Okay, I don't want to help you too much yet. <laughs> All right. So obviously you have to create, open a file. You know, you're going to save it. It's going to call, be called quadratic. It's going to give it a .m extension. And the first line in this needs to be the function declaration. You have to function outputs equal quadratic parentheses inputs. Okay? So give it a shot. And then as time goes on and we get near the end, I'll help more and more. But if I, if I just give you the answer, you'll just type it in and you won't learn anything. So try, try to do it. And if you have some problem, um, let me know. Hey, you're not in this class. No. Um, this is one of the graders, by the way. I remember you had said something about us maybe coming to Wednesdays. Oh, yeah, sometimes sure. Sometimes just to like yeah. float around, so I was already around. Today. Oh, okay. Were you floating around the back? Yeah. Oh, guys, I didn't see you back there. No, yeah, All right. Yeah. So the idea is if you guys need help now, there's two helper bears. Obviously, I'm the preferable one, but um, <laughs> what's that? Someone, is, did any of the other graders make it here? Not that I see. You're the first grader to ever make it here. That's okay. why I was surprised Ooh. to see you. But I did tell you to come, so I mean, I'm not... Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> You're very popular. Okay. I was just looking at this. Um, so, yeah, I tested. I'm almost done. I'll probably send you something pretty soon. Mm -hmm. The main thing I was just wondering was with um, the amount of nominal runs versus, like, how many total runs you do. Mm -hmm. Is there, like, some sort of... I don't know if it gets funky... Well, you, you want to do, I think the idea is you want to do enough runs at the nominal case to, to be able to do statistical analysis. Like, okay. Yeah, like calculate the mean and so the variance. So just kind of keep the ratio. I noticed you did keep like kind of a certain ratio, like if you had 30, yeah, like a 30 nominal, or 30 runs totally might add like 10 nominal runs. Yeah, I think 10 nominal will be okay no matter how many Because I was just going are. through and switching up some things, like instead of doing 20, doing 30, or instead of... 30, 40, and like various okay. cases. Right, um, let me see what else. I just got to keep my eye to make sure that they're not. Yeah, right, so right. Yeah, these are the kind of things you can change too, which yeah, I see you've yeah. already done. Yeah, I was checking this. Does Will this affect anything other than that in this code? I, I've been running things, but I was just looking, eyeing this right now, and I didn't know about. I know you, in, I remember you indexed some stuff here, but I can f figure it out later, but. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look. So why don't we, because it's kind of hard to talk now, because, no, it's um, so why don't you give it your best shot and yeah, then send me an email, and if there's some, but I'd have to look at it because I don't remember the details. You kind of give them some choices, like could I just mix those up a little too, just the specific. Yeah, sure. Like, keep, yeah. Obviously keep the same kind of structure. Yeah, just, yeah, you can, you can change it up right, like cool. that, yeah. The idea is just run it beforehand to make sure it all works out. Yeah, I've yeah. been doing that up until <laughs> Because sometimes morning. things are surprising and you think it's going to be fine and then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you want to run it beforehand. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That was one of my very last questions was just, um, 